the housing market is going in flames into a recession, guys. Eh, recession sucks. It is continuing to get hot, hot, and hot out here. Ah! Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Prices are continuing to drop, and the housing market, guys, listen to this. The housing market, for the fifth month in a row, the housing market home sales have plunged, guys. They are continuing to go down and down and down. Let's jump into this. Guys, this is a good video. You want to stay tuned. I got some good stuff that will show you guys exactly what's happening in this housing market and why you need this information to make the best decision you possibly can. My name is Orlando and welcome to the channel, but let's jump right into it. It says, housing market alarm as home sales plunge for the fifth month in a row. Existing home sales in the U.S. plunged by 5.4% from May to June, marking the fifth consecutive month that sales have declined, according to this data. Now, guys, it's no surprise. If you've been following my videos, you know I have been saying that prices will come down. Patience is just the name of the game. You have to be patient in this market. You cannot try to rush to go buy something because if you rush... <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like some of the individuals six months ago that bought a home overpriced. Now, hence, some of those individuals may have gotten a good deal on interest rates, but we're talking about individuals who have paid hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking price only to see their next door neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Given a price cut of $100,000 less than what they bought their home for. As a joke, I mean, would then share. How do you think that's going to make a buyer feel that bought six months ago, but now he's seen his value of his home drop by a hundred? 150,000. In some markets, guys, $200,000 down. I beg your pardon? Not because, now let's get this straight guys. It's not because the core base value of the home dropped. It was because people were paying 200, $100,000 over asking. And that is the value of the home. But before we get into that guys, we have 82% of you guys that are watching this video that, that aren't subscribed to the channel. What are you doing? Why haven't you subscribed? please hit that subscribe button. It allows more individuals to see this content and we definitely want this channel and community to grow. Let's jump back into it. In May, the sales of existing single family homes had declined by 3.4% after the median existing home sales price exceeded 400,000 for the first time. Compared to figures from May, 2021, sales of existing home dropped 14.2%. Whoa! <laughs> It is going down, down, down. It's going down. <laughs> you guys have to be very cautious of exactly what this is saying. Now, we know prices are continuing to go down, guys. We know this. We know this. But are these truly the values of these homes? Or are we just cutting, like I always say, taking 20, 30, 40, 50% off the $200,000 asking price number. And I believe right now we are still cutting into the over asking price area. I believe it needs to come down uh, more into the core base of the value of the homes. Now, the bad part about this, guys, is that we're going to see when the recession hits a lot of homeowners that overpaid that cannot keep up with the existing inflation, the higher mortgage, some individuals may lose their jobs and no longer can afford the home that they paid for. And a lot of these properties will come back onto the market. Will it be a foreclosure zombie apocalypse? I don't know, but, but hey, look, if it does, you have to be ready to buy some of these properties that do come available. So let's continue on. I want you guys to see this, this existing home sales falling. Now, when you look at this graph, it says the big red line here is the U.S. And obviously we can see the U.S. it going up, up, obviously in January of this year. Look at that. Look at the hump right there. It was 6.4 or basically 6.5 million in sales. But then now we can see it dropping, dropping, and dropping. Now, let's take a look. The indicator I want that I always tell you guys, 
You, if you watch my videos from the beginning, you know that I always say Florida tells on itself. Florida tells exactly what's going to happen in the market when it comes to a recession. That's hot. We see a lot of these Miami condos, people overpaying and these ridiculous, I mean, it's just mind boggling. So I like to look in the South to see exactly what's happening. So when we take a look at this South, which is this green line, the light green line here, we can see that prices are going down, down, and down. Now, a lot of you guys will say, hey, I live in Florida and um, prices are continuing to go up. Well, I would say that's actually bad. If home sales are going down, but prices are going up, you have to see that red flag right there. Or do I gotta explain it? <laughs> Do you want me to explain why on a graph, one graph is going up in home price, but then there's a low demand for the houses too? Do I gotta really explain that? I'll, I'll go ahead and explain it. That's a recession, that's a crash that's about to happen. When prices continue to go up and there is no demand for that, then definitely there will be a crash because the values have to come down for people to want to buy those homes. And that is where Miami and South Florida and Florida just in general is headed. And I don't mean to be the bearer of bad news, but if you're in South Florida, you are about to get, I don't know, rewarded <laughs> with some affordable properties that you can get into. But I, I love looking at that, guys. But let's take a look at the Midwest. We see the Midwest here. It's pretty steady. Guys, let me tell you something about the Midwest. And I say this all the time. The Midwest, you won't get this, you know, California, Florida, Boston, Austin, Texas, Dallas, all of these places that have this huge bump. They just explode in appreciation. Good old Midwest will get five, six, seven, maybe on a great year appreciation. But the thing that happens is when a recession hits, we don't really get hit what we may lose 2% maybe because we don't have the explosion and appreciation. Homes in the Midwest are, you can get a really nice sizable home for 400,000. You may be, uh, you may be living in a mini mansion, <laughs> you know, but 200 to three, four, 500 is definitely a mansion in, in most Midwest areas. So, you know, that's what you get. That's the reason why you see that steady line across where it's not looking really ridiculous. Then we have, we go into the West. Obviously, you can see the West going down. That's California, whatnot. It's steady, steady, but then it has that big dip there. And then we have the Northeast, which is cold. <laughs> <laughs> Most people don't want to live in the cold, but but you can see that's pretty steady, but it did go down a little bit. Despite the drop in sales, properties remain on the market for less time in June than they did in May. Only 14 days compared to 16 days in May, the lowest amount of time since NAR has been tracking it. NAR reported that the existing homes are priced right are selling very quickly, while overpriced ones tend to remain on the market longer. Imagine! Realtors changing their minds. Remember, six months ago it was if you don't put in an offer that's overpriced, you will no longer, you won't even get a chance at a house. Uh, hey, what? Don't even contact me. Listen, buyer, if don't ever, don't contact me unless you're twenty, thirty thousand dollars over asking. We're not entertaining any of those type of offers. But then you look at this article right here. It says from a Realtors Association reported that existing homes priced right. <laughs> <laughs> now everything is priced right. But six months ago, it was overpriced, not priced right, overpriced. You have to put in a overpriced offer to get it. Are selling very quickly. I bet, I bet. Anybody knows that. You price it right, you sell a home that's, uh, let's say you a home that is $200,000 affordable. If you sell it at $200,000, it's probably gonna sell. <laughs> But in a market where people are saying, you know what, I'm sick and tired of overpaying and I got to pay all these inflation costs and on top of that high interest rates on mortgages, 
forget this. I, I'm done with this. But let's get into the juicy stuff, guys. I, look, this is some good stuff that I want to go over here. South Florida resi sales plunge. Price climb in the second quarter. What? Florida sales are plunging? They're dropping? People don't want to pay $2 billion for a 800 square feet a condo? What? That is so surprising. <laughs> If only somebody would have called that was going to happen. I mean, only if someone would have done that. <laughs> Resident sales fell across South Florida top markets in the second quarter while prices continue to climb according to a report. The annual sales decline were partially a result of rising interest rates and volatility in the financial markets and the war in Ukraine, according to reports. Miami coastal mainland closings fell 16% year over year. 16% guy. Do you know how significant that is? That is showing you people are just saying, I can't afford Miami. And remember, if you watched videos months ago, I was saying to you guys, when you see Miami, when you see South Florida, the condos and everything like that be getting overpriced and the demand plummets, that's when things are about to get spicy. <laughs> and let's just see if the demand is dwindling just not in Miami but the southern portion of Florida which is well like I said I believe if you look at history we know those areas get hit the hardest so it shows here closings fell 16 percent year over year to 5,236 in coastal areas in mainland Miami which includes the downtown Miami coconut grove area and those neighborhoods. A single family home sales decreased 21% in the second quarter. Now, let's look at this. While condo sales fell 12%, <laughs> the median price of a condo on the coastal mainland jumped 34% to 435,000. The median price for single family homes rose 14% to 628,000. I hate to pat myself on the back. One more time. But I'm telling you guys, look, the prices are continuing to go up, but the demand is going down. This is a red flag. <laughs> this is a flag that you should be saying, whoa, the demand going down, but the prices are going up. Make that make sense. Demand down. Demand, meaning people do not want to purchase in this area, right? Demand is going down. Sales are going down. But the value of the homes are continuing to go up? This is a recipe for a recession, a crash. Miami Beach and Barrier Islands. Resident sales decreased 23% in Miami. And then it gives a list of all of these areas. Miami Beach, Bay Harbor Islands, Fisher Island. Highlight this. Single family homes plunged 49%. Can we have a moment of silence? <laughs> a moment of silence for Miami. <laughs> to 149 closings. Mm, 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 mm. Condo sales fell 19% to 1,700 closing. Condo inventory also took a nosedive, dropping 36% because people realize I'm not gonna be able to sell my condo. It's, I'm, I'm stuck with it. You guys are paying these ridiculous HOA prices with these condos. And then you try to think to yourself, how am I gonna rent this? You're gonna try to turn it into a rental and you got $500 a month HOA fees? Make that make sense to me. On top of your mortgage, on top of your taxes, on top of your insurance, you're now paying $500 a month in HOA fees? If that's the business of HOAs, man, that is a great business. <laughs> $500 a month just to say, mm, no, hey, put those tulips right there in front of the building. Hmm, because <laughs> remember, insurance covers everything else inside of your building, and then there's insurance outside of it. So what really does the $500 a month HOA do for you? Not much. Just tell you what to do, what not to do. <laughs> then, then we have Coral Gables, guys. 52% down to 135 closing. Mm, mm, mm. And then we have Fort Lauderdale, 23% to 592 closings. Condo sales fell 17%. And then we have Palm Beach, 39% decline. I mean, 
Guys, look, I think it continue to go down and down. Florida is pretty much, you know, done. <laughs> I mean, it still has further to go because the demand is not there, but the prices are going up. It's two charts going different directions. Now, with that being said, we still have to wait for prices to come down. But let me tell you what, sellers are gonna find out very quickly that when there's no demand, you can't sell for those prices. You have to bring down the prices just like the rest of the nation, guys. So hopefully you got value from this content, guys. I'm gonna need you to watch this next video here. It will help you learn about this crazy housing market. Get into your first rental property. Check in the description below. We have some useful links there with some free credit reports and whatnot and join our membership program. I will see you in the next one. Thanks.